Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. Here on my YouTube channel, I post a variety of different budgeting related videos that is usually on Mondays, Wednesdays, and then again on Fridays. So if that is content that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So yeah, today I am filming my August monthly budget closeout. So this video is actually going up on September the 2nd, which is actually pretty early for me to post a budget closeout from the previous month. That's actually because August for me um, spanned from July the 29th up until August the 25th. Um, and that was just in order to make my paychecks and weekly budget check-ins all sort of like make sense. But ultimately this for me is August just like, it's basically, it's four weeks. <laughs> And the paycheck that I actually receive on August the 26th, I'm counting that as September paycheck number one, just in case you are curious, because I am um, a bi-weekly salaried employee. So yeah, anyways, that was just a little bit of an aside. Let's get down to it, because I'm sure that there's a lot of things that I have to go over <laughs> when I'm talking about my budget closeout. So the first thing that I have listed is my salary. So again, I am a salaried employee. I am paid bi-weekly. Um, I get the same paycheck every other paycheck, but on a monthly basis, I always get paid the same amount. So I budgeted $3,730, and that was exactly what I brought home. So there was no difference there. Um, for YouTube, so in the month of March, I did hit 1,000 subscribers, and I was admitted to the YouTube Partner Program. I had budgeted that I was going to bring home about $100, um, in order to actually bring home $100 from YouTube, it means I have to bring home approximately $140 in AdSense because I do save 30% of my YouTube paycheck um, to pay taxes at the end of the year. So this was the first month that I actually budgeted with my YouTube income. And that's just because if you see down at the bottom here, it was going to be a very tight month. So I wanted to make sure that I actually like had <laughs> that money. Um, but yeah, for YouTube, what I actually ended up bringing home, and I'll do this over on the side here, was I brought home $199 and I think 41 cents. So if you times that by 0.7, you are left with $139.58. So what I actually did was I took $139 and I transferred that from the savings account that that money gets deposited into and I put it into my main checking account. So the actual amount here was $139. So that was a positive difference of $39, which was awesome. Again, I always say this, but thank you guys so much for that. Um, I really appreciate it. Like when you're watching my channel and like you watch my videos and my ads and everything, like all of this is because of you guys watching my channel. So like, again, I really truly appreciate it because it does make a huge difference when it comes to just like my debt payoff and just like basically my financial health overall. <laughs> that money, I mean, for some people it might not sound like a lot, but for me it's really amazing. Um, finally, I do have other. So I'm going to actually rename this other slash rollover because I did actually decide to roll over some money at the end of July and I carried it over into August. So my rollover amount from July was actually $330. But on top of that $330 for rollover, I did actually get a climate action incentive check. Um, I am located in the province of Ontario. Um, it was a for $100. $86.50, but I do always round against myself, so I only counted that as $186. So if you add those two things together, you get my total like other um, slash rollover income being $516, which was great. Again, it did make a huge difference for me <laughs> this month because normally like I don't have other income, but I am doing a rollover amount. Um, I'm planning on doing it for the next few months just because there is a very high likelihood that I am going on vacation. So the normal way that I do my budget where at the end of the month I... Um, put everything extra towards my debt. I'm not really doing that right now, again, just because I'm trying to save up a bit of money to go on vacation. So anyways, if you add all of these up, it makes my total income for the month $4,000. $385, which is a positive amount of $555, which again makes sense because if you take $39 plus 516, you are left with $555, which again is amazing. Um, that's a lot more <laughs> than I'm used to. Um, and of course, again, a good chunk of that was carryover, but I'm obviously very happy with that YouTube money that I was able to bring home. Um, now onto my fixed expenses. And I used to always say my fixed expenses 
expenses were more like bills. Um, they weren't necessarily fixed in terms of amounts. I don't necessarily do that anymore. It's more that just my fixed expenses are anything that I don't do weekly check-ins for because I categorize a bunch of other stuff into fixed. It's just more like they're more planned than when it comes to my variable expenses. So my first fixed expense that I had was my rent and I budgeted $1,200 and that was what I put aside. Um, so that was no difference. Obviously I had to pay my rent on August the 1st. I was actually planning, um, I'm not necessarily planning, I was thinking about on my second paycheck in August, putting a bit of that money towards my September 1st rent. Um, so that would have kind of made it so that I was putting more money from August towards my rent. I didn't actually decide to do that just because I am sort of using a rollover right now. So it's not like my account's getting super low anyways, but there is going to come a time where I will get back to doing my rent sort of ahead of time. Um, I think it'll be happening closer to the end of September, but that will be great. <laughs> and I'll show you when I do that. But yeah, my rent, I did put $1,200. Hydro was 70, was it seriously $70 again? Was that the last? I think it was the last three months that it was I think it's been three months yeah so July it was exactly 70 which again it wasn't it was exactly 70 it was that it was 70 it was like 69 something and then what about June was June also $70 no it was 61 back in June so it's been two months then that I've had my hydro bill be at 70 yeah here so yeah anyways hydro for me is electricity um electricity is what cools my home um I also got a comment saying like wow, why are your electricity prices so low? My like house, like the apartment that I live in is very small. So I'm not like cooling like an entire home or anything. So like I'm not spending like a ton of ton of money on hydro. So like that $70 is usually only that high when I do have to use my air conditioning basically every day. And I do honestly like being cool. <laughs> so yeah, $70 there. Um, internet did cost me $60. That was no difference. Um, I did actually, as of when I'm filming this video, get my bill for um September and it is going to be slightly less than that because there was that outage it's not very much less but it's I mean it's fine it's just yeah there was a huge outage um of internet back at the beginning of July so there's a slight change to that but honestly I would have just preferred to have internet than having like a small credit back to me but yeah um next I have my tenants insurance that is $25 so there's no difference there um same with my car insurance that was 120 no difference and again I did mention my car insurance should be going up in October but I do already pay pretty good rates for car insurance so I'm not mad about that my phone bill I budgeted 59 and that was exactly what I paid that is for an iPhone 12 mini um, with airpods that I financed um, but when I financed that I did get myself a very good deal on my actual phone plan so it actually only made my phone price increase by I think about two dollars a month so that was really good um, next is subscriptions and subscriptions I actually only had two dollars for subscriptions um, I think when I had this originally, I had um, Kindle Unlimited, but I did cancel Kindle Unlimited. So the only subscription that I'm paying for monthly now is iCloud. So that's a positive difference of $12, which is great. Again, there's going to come a time that I'm going to want Kindle Unlimited back. There's a couple books that I think are coming out in either September or October that I want to read on Kindle Unlimited. So I'll probably buy that for a month and then cancel it afterwards. Um, next, I have probably the most contentious one on my list, and that's my credit card minimums. So if you guys have been, have been around a while, um, back when I originally started my debt-free journey back in July of 2021, my credit card minimum was $400, and that was basically the amount that I had like done as my snowball. Um, back in April, after I got my raise, because I got a new job, I upped that to $750, and then in May, I started doing $800. So I had kind of wanted to do 800 until the end of the year because that would make it so that I was 100% going to be credit card debt free by the end of 2022. However, as I've mentioned, um, I'm pretty much set on going on vacation. And if I go on vacation, I cannot afford to be putting $800 towards my debt. So I did actually decide in August to drop that back down to $400. So it does technically mean that for the court purposes of this budget that's a positive $400 it's not really a positive thing though it's just something that I'm doing for myself because I do really want to try and prioritize going on vacation because I haven't gone anywhere since September of 2019 um, so that's why I couldn't put that full $800. So basically, um, the auto draft amount that automatically gets paid is high. I've dropped that back down to 400. 
Um, next I have my sinking funds and I budgeted 300 and that is what I put towards that. So there was no difference there. Um, next I had weddings and weddings I did do $200. So there was no difference. I only have to do that for one more month, which is awesome. Starting on October, I'll no longer have that. So hopefully I'll be able to put that towards like an extra credit card payment. Um, next I have savings and savings. Um, I did $80 and that is what I did. So there was no difference there. Again, savings for me, basically at the beginning of this year, I started, I started to put $20 every Friday aside into a savings envelope. Um, and that by the end of the year will give me over a thousand dollars. So I did put that money there. Um, next I had nails and nails. I budgeted $120 and was that actually what I ended up spent? Yeah, it was. <laughs> That's interesting because, so if you look here, I budgeted $55 this week for nails and then I had $65. So 55 plus 65, which is 120, but I didn't actually get what I thought I was going to. When I initially budgeted this, I had budgeted that I was going to get um, a, a shellac manicure twice. And one of those times I was going to get a pedicure. But what I actually did was I had a shellac manicure one time that was very expensive, or not very expensive, it was just more expensive than I thought it was going to be. And then the second time I just got a regular manicure and pedicure, but then I was charged to get the shellac removed. So in total, it, it meant that I did spend the full $120 on my nails. So there was no difference there. And then finally on travel, this travel expense isn't my vacation. This was to attend a wedding with one of my friends who had to go to this wedding and they were hoping that I could go with them to sort of like offset some of the costs. So I did do that and I actually spent $300 on that wedding, which is kind of what I expected to spend. I didn't expect it to be $200. I mean, I could have done $200 because that was actually the amount that my friend asked me to transfer them but I did put a little bit extra towards that just because it helped them out and it helped kind of like pay for part of the gift as well which my friend didn't expect me to do but I did um I was honestly I was just in a better place financially when it came to like different things like I rolled over some money I got that climate action incentive so I wanted to be able to give that to my friends so that's what I did there so yeah, if you add all of these up, it brings me a total for my um, fixed expenses of $2,877. So if you take $3,248 and you subtract $2,877, it means that I technically saved um, $371 in my fixed expense category, which now that I'm looking at, I don't know if that's right. It isn't right. I'm sorry, you guys. I made a mistake here. <laughs> the issue that I had was my phone bill. I forgot about this. I did not pay my phone bill in August. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. Um, my phone bill actually was nothing. And it wasn't that I didn't pay my phone bill. It was that August for me spanned, or spanned, I can't speak English, sorry. August for me spanned from August the 29th through, um, sorry, not August the 29th, July the 29th through August the 25th. And um, that being said, <laughs> my phone bill is actually due, I think, on the, I want to say the 28th of the month now that I'm looking at it. I'm not positive. Or the 29th of the month. Hold on, I'm just looking at my calendar. It's due on the 28th. So basically, I didn't have to pay for it in August. So I budgeted for it in this paycheck, but I didn't actually pay for it in August. I'm going to be paying for it with the first paycheck that I receive in September. So that's actually a positive amount of $59. And that's correct when you look at the these totals. Uh, so yeah, sorry, you guys, I do, I do have notes over to the side. So that would make sense. So if you take 59 plus 12, plus 400 minus 100, you get the 371 that's here. So yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> sorry. So yeah, anyways, next onto my variable expenses. So again, my variable expenses are what I do my weekly check-ins for. Um, again, I'm not a cash budget. I use my debit card. So that's why I am technically able to go over in this, but that's that's how I try to keep this separate. So my first variable expense was groceries and I did really well in groceries this month. I actually only spent $222 on groceries. So that means that I was under budget in groceries by $18, which is awesome. I'm super happy with that. <laughs> um, again, I probably next week, what you'll see when I do like my week one check-in for September is that I'll be super over budget in groceries and then I'll cut back the rest of the month. That's just sort of been my trend. But honestly, that's not the worst thing. Um, as long as I can keep myself under budget overall, I'm good. 
Uh, next I have dining out and dining out I actually only spent $142 so again that's another positive $18 for dining out which again is great I'm super happy with that it kind of means that like the $100 per week that I budgeted myself for food in August I was only spending closer to $90 which is good because that $90 is what I actually did for September because I am trying to get my dining out budget back a bit down over the next few months. Um, next I have gas and gas I ended up spending $60 on gas so that was a positive amount of $40. I sort of over budgeted when it came from gas. I kind of assumed that when I went up to the cottage with my friends gas was going to be more expensive but I didn't really factor in that like multiple people were going to be chipping in for gas so that's how that worked out. Um, and then finally miscellaneous. I didn't do great in miscellaneous. Um, I actually spent $106 there so I was over budget in miscellaneous by $26 but the thing about that miscellaneous overage if you actually go back to like my weekly check-ins this was a gift here for $17.35 sorry $17.35 and then what was the other gift this was the gift here for $33.42 so over $50 of this $106 was gift spending and I mean if I had $50 in my gift envelope I would have taken it from there I just didn't um, I have definitely overspending gifts so far this year so I wasn't really able to do that which is unfortunate but that's ultimately again it's not an excuse I'm just explaining to you I was wasn't that I just went super over budget with my own personal spending and miscellaneous like if you take that 106 and you subtract the 50 I only actually spend $56 on myself and miscellaneous which is awesome <laughs> if you look at it that way again you can't because I still overspend but yeah Anyways, if you add all of that up, it means my variable expenses for the month were $530. So that means overall, I was actually $50 under budget when it came to miscellaneous, which is great. Um, or not miscellaneous, sorry, variable, which is great. And if I reconcile that really quickly, if I have 18 plus 18 plus 40 minus 26, it gives me $50, which is awesome. Now let's bring my numbers down to the bottom and I'll calculate my balance for the end of August. So my income actually ended up being $4,385. Again, it wasn't all income. It was $330 worth of carryover. So that was a positive amount of $555 more, which is amazing. <laughs> um, next, I have my fixed expenses, which I budgeted $3,248, but I only spent $2,877. So again, that was a positive amount of $371. And then finally, I have my variable expenses, which were $530, which was positive uh, difference of $50 because I had budgeted a total of $580. So if you take $4,385, you subtract $2,877, and then you subtract $530, it means that I was left with a total of $978, which ended up being $976 more than I expected to have at the end of the month. If I reconcile that quickly, $555 plus 371 plus 50, it gives me the 976, which is great. Um, the interesting thing about all of this was that I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to make like these paycheck budgets work when it came to like the fact that I was using a rollover. But what it is is that this amount here is approximately equal to what I had at the end of August paycheck number two. Um, the reason why it's off is because of how I do my rounding when I do like my weekly check-ins because I always do try to round against myself. But yeah, that is how I did it. So honestly, having almost $1,000 left at the end of August is amazing because again, the likelihood of me going on vacation now is very high. So I wanna just basically try to save as much money as possible so I'm not not having to put any of my vacation on a credit card. I do have backups in terms of like I have savings, I have sinking funds, I have things that I can do, but if I can cash flow it as much as possible while still um, putting little bits of money towards my debt, that's great. Um, I'm will actually again you'll see this when I post my video on Monday which will be my September debt overview I did actually choose to make a small extra debt payment with this money um, just because when I was closing up my budget and I was figuring out everything 
I realized that I was very close to like kind of like another milestone. So I wanted to hit that, um, which I did. <laughs> um, and yeah, but it doesn't mean that like this entire amount is going towards like savings and debt, which it normally would. I'm just, again, right now I'm trying to just like save as much for my vacation as possible, but I am still, obviously I'm paying a lot more than on my debt than I have to be paying because $400 is way more than the actual minimum payment on my last credit card. So yeah, anyways, that is it for today. Thank you again, you guys so much for tuning in again my name is amelia and this is amelia budgets um as i just mentioned my next video will be up on monday and that will be my september debt overview i hope you all have an amazing weekend and i will talk to you again on monday goodbye everyone